Rising cost of education, just a few hundred or perhaps a few thousand seats for lakhs and lakhs of seekers for quality education, a few of the problems that traditional universities are finding it very difficult to deal with. But at this point in time, can it be said that online learning be a replacement for traditional universities? That's what we're debating on Crossfire today. Hello and welcome. In the studio today, I'm joined on my right uh, by, uh, with Pallavi Kare and on my left, Shreya Mehra. Uh, Pallavi, let's start with you. Uh, why do you feel that online courses uh, are better than traditional universities? Because currently, if you see in status, we have a lot of problems that are that traditional universities are facing, which is something that I feel that online education can sort of target and remove, like the problem of accessibility, the problem of high prices of like say university education, the idea that people have to move cities to go ahead and get an education is something that not a lot of people can do, right. and to say that students have to then sacrifice a college education to go ahead because they're facing such problems is you know then if we have a replacement in the form of an online education then it becomes more feasible to go ahead and give this you know education for all a push forward right right sure and of course you feel that traditional universities uh, of course i mean you know hold the kind of place that they do and cannot be replaced by online learning you have a minute to finish your point traditional university is like a time and tested method and it is like which results in an overall development you get a chance to show, socialize in a better manner you get to you come across people from various cultures coming from different backgrounds so you develop a more lively and a more broader outlook towards life it is not only about education but it, it is about all round development right. that you learn in a traditional system of education right. like online education Education is something where you just get to learn about that is being like a particular just course, the topic. just reading it, yes, yeah. and of course appearing in it's tests. Just, just what you're reading, but right. in a traditional system, it's like a lot more to it. Right, uh, Pallavi, wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you concede that that's a very valid point? The fact that I mean, you we don't go to colleges and schools uh, well just to learn a particular topic. We also go there because it leads to development of certain other skills, certain other habits, which are very important. So wouldn't you concede, wouldn't you agree with Shreya? Not, not really, no, think about it, okay? Like the primary concern with the college is that it provides you education. To think that right now a lot of people are not being able to attain that education because of these problems is is because why need to push, you know, like say ed online education forward. Secondly, when you say like online or like all round development, that's also something you can do outside of college, right? So if you want to go ahead and join an NGO, you can do that outside of college. I think a lot of all, like all round development happens to the time you're in school. So once, you're, once you've already attained that certain age and that certain amount of development, after that going like seeking college education at home is pretty like feasible. Right. You can be a working professional or you can still be a student. Uh, it definitely cuts out the commute. The hours that you spend in the metros and in the rickshaws and the autos definitely does all of that. So how would you counter uh, what Pallavi just uh, said, Shriya? So look, there are two things. There's convenience and there's experience. You can either opt for convenience or you can go for experience. So it's like if you look for convenience, you're missing out on very important experiences. You need to learn time management. If you're staying at home, you miss upon time man management. You don't learn to manage your time. So like when you have to travel every day, you have to make a timetable. You have a schedule. You learn to manage your time. So at a later stage, when you like enter the professional world, you are more better prepared for it. Right. But if you've, like, you've had an education in the comfort of your home, right. where's that learning? You, you missed upon that very important stage of your life. Right. Basically, that's an extension of what she was uh, saying earlier, but that's a very valid point. I mean, you know, uh, time management and all these skills. Well, of course, I mean, we all keep running from pillar to post, uh, making ends meet, trying to do what we're doing. Uh, how would you uh, contradict that, uh, Pallavi? Honestly, I think it sort of restricts you from doing anything else, right? So I have classes from 9 to 6 in the evening. And after that, I barely have time to do anything else. Once I'm in the comfort of my house, when I... When time management actually happens at home, right? When I can manage my time and actively give it to all spheres that I'm possibly interested in. Now in college, I also have to give 75% attendance, right? So all of these factors, when you combine it together, I don't learn time management. I learn restricting my interests because now I have to go to a college and take in those extra hours that I need to commute and the, you know, like the time that I have to spend giving that attendance, full attendance that I need to give to appear in an exam. So right. it sort of restricts you rather than teaching you time management. She's saying it restricts you. It's and of course, I mean, the kind of points that she made uh, did sound very convincing to me. 
So it's like it's it's not restricting you. It's making you learn discipline, and discipline is very important to have a good life. And moreover, when you are like going to college, you have teachers, you have mentors whom you can look up to. So it's it is not an open source of knowledge, whereas online learning is a very open source of knowledge. I mean, you can go for a particular course or something, but you actually don't know what you are act like going to follow exactly. It's like. Right. But when you are going into an institute, you have like proper directions which you are supposed to follow, and like there's a person who's guiding you. It's not always like at a very young age, you are not always very mature to decide what is good for you and what is not. What is not, and of course, the role of teachers, the role professors play in our lives. Of course, we all remember our favorite teachers, and we all remember teachers who well uh, help us out the most in the class, and. We are also a result. I mean, whatever we become eventually in the life has a lot to do uh, with the kind of contribution those teachers made in our life. And of course, that can't happen in case of, uh, I mean, if you're sitting at home and learning, sitting at a computer, just watching, reading, uh, looking at lectures and uh, appearing in exams. That too online. No, but it can, right? So, like, once you start actively pursuing the idea that online education can replace traditional universities, so instead of going to a classroom, the classroom comes to you. So the mm -hmm. teachers, the professors are now just on a video on Skype, say, you know, just like more accessible to more number of students. The same sort of interaction is there, except it's online, right? So that's what's happening in real life too. If you can't speak to a person or not meet him daily, you can just like Skype him or video call him or a video conference. So if you actively pursue, once you consider the idea that online education can actually replace traditional media, traditional universities, then you can always find ways and means to fill in the little gaps that are coming in the, like in the online education, right? The teachers can simply go on video and this sort of mentorship and all of that will still remain even Howard is doing that right. currently. Right, right. So, but do you feel that this debate, at least and especially in India, is a little premature, at least at this point in time, because when you're talking about websites like MOOCs and Coursera and other open online platforms, well, uh, the argument is that they're reaching out to those people who have access to education, who can afford to go to colleges, of course, because one of the fact, uh, one of the factors that we talked about earlier is cost. Well, I mean, they have that access. So, uh, well, the point is that it is not reaching out to the other 80%, other 70%. I mean, it's still managing to reach the same people who can still go to a college. See, it's about really, uh, it's like relative advantage, right? right? So, like right now, a college education is far more expensive than a net connection. So, once you consider that, so if you can get a classroom in, in the cost of a net connection, that's far more simpler to go ahead and possibly try and afford a college education. Right, so and Shreya obviously agreed with me on that, right? Yeah, so like, if you see there's a digital divide in India, not everyone has the access to this technology to like opt for the system of online education. Like even if it is cheaper to have an internet connection and it's more expensive to pay for an education and in a college or a proper reputed institution. Not everyone knows, even if they can afford an internet connection, how to operate with it, how to deal with it. Right. So it's like there's a digital divide in India. Not everyone is aware of it. India is like more of rural population than the urban population. So what about the rural population? How will they come across this system? Right, right. Uh, at this point in time, Pallavi, I'll ask you for your concluding remarks. Simply that right now in CDSCO, we have a lot of problems with university education. You're not being able to provide or access to education to a lot of people. And since you're already promoting something like education for all, it's, it's a simple debate, right? Do I provide more number of students basic education or I then provide certain students and real-time experience it's simply right. that right? right so now if the idea is to provide education for all then you just go ahead and make it a virtual experience right sure uh, a big problem with traditional universities is the fact that the cutoffs the seats are limited lakhs and lakhs of students if you look at it by 2020 half of this country's population I mean I mean there are so many students out there who want access to quality education and the kind of education system that we have, traditional universities that we have, lack of space, lesser number of seats than takers. And that's something which can definitely be addressed by, in a very big way, uh, by online learning. If there are so many cutoffs, it pushes you to work more hard for it. And as a result, the number of students who come there, they're more well prepared for it. It is the more brighter crowd who comes to there. And it's not only about the government colleges, there are many other private universities through which students can get through if they want to opt for the tr traditional system of education. And moreover, they work more hard for it and their entrance exams for which they can appear. And it is not only about the cutoffs through which they get through the universities. On that note, we will wrap up this debate. Uh, online education, even if it 
could replace traditional universities. It's not going to happen in next 5 or 10 years. There's still some time before it can happen, if at all. On that note, we will wrap up uh, this debate. 